Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. This is your captain speaking. Please keep all arms, legs, and other appendages inside the vehicle as we storm off. If you give me just one moment, I'm going to be sharing all of the links to this awesome stream to everybody on social media, Twitter, Discord, all that good stuff. If you give me just one moment, I'll be right back for more. Alrighty, welcome everybody. Say hi in chat if you're here early. Welcome, and I can't wait to be here and storm out with all of you. Neil, it's good to see you. Let's get some storm going. Absolutely, you're right on that. Um, tonight, we're going to be doing a fun little uh, throwback, as it were. We had a legacy showcase challenge just last Sunday. This is a premier level event. You have to earn enough qualifying points or QPs to actually get in. And you are competing against a lot of high level players on Magic Online. And one of the players was playing the Epic Storm and they actually ended up in a top eight. It's fantastic top eight finish with the Epic Storm. This is a version 13.7 couple versions older we'll talk about some of those differences but it was really awesome to see storm doing so well in a field where delver and initiative are the top dogs we had a couple of combo decks in the top eight and the epic storm was one of them and it's really exciting to see so um i'm gonna wait for a little bit before we actually get started on the league that i'm queued up for but let's talk about some of this list, right? Um, we've got one of our initial white builds with Orm's Chan, Silence, and Prismatic Ending. This is a, um, <clears throat> a list where we were still really teching hard for Mono White Initiative. We have a Slaughter Pact in the sideboard, which we don't have anymore, and we also have Crash. These two cards are um, not present in our current builds, but they are very powerful against the early onslaught that was Mono White Initiative. The hype has kind of died down. It's um, no longer are people clamoring for bans or revisions to the initiative mechanic. Um, it is just another thing to be doing on a Thursday night in Legacy. But unfortunately, uh, 
they are going to have to contend with Crash and Slaughter Pact, cards that we brought in for the initiative as we developed this deck list that you see before you, um, specifically for that. Um, one of the big onuses for this change was Veil of Summer was poor, poorly positioned um, in the format, and we actually ended up putting in a, a mixed playset of Silence and Orem's Chant instead of the Veil of Summer. And this is not a card without text in non-blue matchups, whereas Veil of Summer was kind of poorly positioned, right? Um, you couldn't really do anything if your opponent wasn't playing black or blue. Veil of Summer was just the, easily the, the cards that you sideboarded out. And another big thing was that it never answered Mindbreak Trap. So we decided to put in these silence effects to beat Mindbreak Trap as well. It's kind of a double-edged sword. This was a really fun iteration um, for me. I really liked that tech. Um, but um, so as far as the consensus from last week's stream with Urza's Bobble over Brainstorm, um, I haven't, honestly, I haven't played it again. Um, I really enjoyed playing it when we actually ended up streaming last week. You can check that stream out after you are finished with this one. Um, the, the big difference for me, it was fun. Galvanic Relay, fantastic card to be playing with Urza's Bobble. But if I'm in a little bit of a a war of attrition and I draw an Urza's Bobble, feels kind of bad. And I would have rather that be Brainstorm. Um, the ability to completely change the texture of your hand is just, it's incredible in a combo deck that requires um, a certain number of cards in hand to actually go off. Um, you know, we could do it with as little as two, but we do require some engines online. Jason, hey, hello, how are you doing? Um, working on a show for school. Well, that's pretty exciting. I hope that that goes well for you. Uh, good luck. So let me um, show you, by the way, this, this version, uh, this version is 13.7 for the Epic Storm. Um, you can find a link to the deck down below. It's going to take you to Moxfield. Moxfield is an awesome way to organize deck lists and kind of keep track of everything that we are working on, um, either as an Epic Storm team or as an individual, right? I've got some CEDH deck list ideas. I have a trade binder. They recently introduced binder collections and things like that that you can share with friends. Be like, hey, this is my trades in paper. Um, or you can have your collection saved on there so that if you're building out a deck list, say version 13.7 of the Epic Storm, you can see which cards you own and maybe you don't own a Crash or a Slaughter Pact and uh, it'll let you know which cards you don't own and you can order them up really quick. Um, same thing for Magic Online, I believe. I believe you can do this online as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about um, Moxfield as I queue into our league. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, a little quick ad from Bryant there. Um, we are going to wait for our opponent to pair up against us. Um, and while we do that, I am going to um, talk a little bit about the deck list. So some of the changes that we've implemented that Karate Dom, who is the player that actually ended up top eighting, um, 
wasn't able to utilize was the inclusion of AVE progenitor ooze, right? This is a version 13.9 right now uh, that we feel is particularly good against blue red delver. It's not the delver killer that had four carpet of flowers and abrupt decays and all these things. Um, we really didn't need all of those tools. Galvanic relay is that kind of um, weapon, right, against blue red delver or other fair blue decks. Um, and Ave kind of just helps us work around the surgical extractions that they're playing. It works around the uh, the, the counterbalances that are being played. So pretty exciting all around to have the green ooze back, but we're going to try the the actual showcase event top list. That was a mess. Um, but we're going to be trying this top eight event uh, showcase event list and uh, see how it works. Dukes, hey, welcome. I I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? And uh, let's see, we are, we're still waiting. We'll st we're still waiting on a, on a pairing, but that's all right. We'll get there. Um, let's get back to this. And there was one other iteration that was between um, this version 13.7 and the version with Ave Progenitor Ooze, which is 0.9. It's kind of hard to keep track of all the version numbers, but you get used to it eventually. It actually helps really nicely organize everything. But in between there, we were playing Voidrend, which was another answer to Counterbalance that ended up not really working out very well against the Wasteland Days deck that seeks to um, establish a mana advantage very early on. But anyway, we are playing against Shadow Fiend 69, and we won the die roll. Set. Um, okay, so this is a really neat hand if we had another artifact or a land. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to turn Mox Opal on and on the play, I'm not gonna keep a no lander that doesn't really go anywhere. So I'm gonna mulligan this one. This one is a little anemic. I'm relying on this brainstorm, which if this was uh, an Urza's Bobble, I would not keep this hand. I wouldn't hesitate for a second to ship this one back, but Brainstorm being a very powerful tool, I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to keep this one, and I'm going to bottom a redundant Mox Opal, which is not turned on yet, but we are one artifact away, and I'll just play a Bloodstained Mire and pass the turn. Um... Let's see what our opponent is doing. You know, if I'm not playing on stream, usually I'm looking up my opponent, um, trying to figure out what they typically play. But on stream, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about that. But you know, I also write for the Epic Storm's website, theepicstorm.com, and typically I like to have a a breadth of knowledge as I'm recording or recording, um, prepping for my articles, um, which is why I typically look up my opponent. Okay. So Tropical Island and Ponder, my opponent chose to shuffle. I am hmm. So if I brainstorm, what am I looking for? I'm looking for potentially the ability to play a Wishclaw Talisman or a Galvanic Relay. Um, those are all good things to do the same turn that I brainstorm, or at least Galvanic Relay is because of the storm count. So I think that I'm going to get a Volcanic Island, so I get all four colors and cast this brainstorm. Scrubland Volcanic Island are a partner pair, if you will. And then the same with um, Underground Sea and Plateau. So our brainstorm did actually give us this Wishclaw Talisman. Not much else, which is a little unfortunate, but 
we can put the chrome box on the bottom and the mox opal on top of that. And I think I'm actually content to pass. This tropical island could be a four color controlled list and I don't want to just dangle my wishclaw talisman in the way of a prismatic ending or something like that. I kind of talked myself out of the play that I had originally started on. Noble Hierarch, okay. Uh, and a Misty Rainforest. This could be something like Infect. This could be something like Bant Initiative. I don't like the idea of needing to draw through my brainstorm, but without doing anything, I should say, but I think that I have to. I think that I'm just going to be passing the turn and seeing what happens. I'm all rolled up with nowhere to go, essentially, right? I would like protection against the, um, the blue deck that is likely playing at least four Force of Wills or force effects. O'Doyle, oh, hello. Uh, yeah, Bant Control looks like it is something. This could be Bant Stoneblade. Uh, Noble Hierarch is an interesting include uh, for a control deck alone. So I am, I'm guessing that there is something else going on, right? They're wanting to cast three drops, which makes me think, oh, this could be initiative. This could be a uh, Green Sun Zenith deck. This could be a number of things. Um, in fact, less likely, I'm going to say 100% less likely because Flooded Strand is not played in Infect because it can't get a Dryad Arbor. Um, this could be a Hull Breacher deck. Um, I don't know. We're going to find out. Ice Fang Quaddle. Okay. Do people say Coatl or Codal? Um, what are we doing here? Oh, Goffman, you're probably right. Yeah, uh, Bant Natural Order. Well, they have four mana now. Bant Natural Order with the top end of Atraxa is definitely my guess. That, that was a very that was a very good tip. That's my that's my bet now. Okay, so if my opponent passes, I will be drawing a fresh card that I didn't see off of Brainstorm. I am no longer Brainstorm locked. Um, my opponent has seven cards in hand, which is not super great. Six cards in hand now that they've played a land. And we get green sun zenith for three okay now this could be a bait and they're actually doing it for two and getting a collector roof which would really really make me sad but i guess oh leovold okay sure yep leovold it is Burning Wish was a very good draw here. Okay. Yeah, Goffman, you got it. Got it in one. Okay, so... Five cards from my opponent. And I know that it's not natural order. Otherwise, they would have... Already cast it. So... I have seven, seven mana, potentially eight mana if I want to exile this Burning Wish under the Chrome Mox, which is just not going to happen. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this Burning Wish. Yeah, I'm going to cast this Burning Wish. For a galvanic relay. Okay, and that just resolved, which is nice. And now I have the mana that I need. Um, 
no imprint. And I think I am actually going to play out this Wishclaw Talisman. And I'm going to float Grixis colors because that makes me feel good. As long as one of them was red, it really didn't matter all that much, but... Um, oh, Reed Duke was playing this. Okay, yeah. Uh, there is a certain effect that Reed Duke has on the game, especially recently after his uh, crowning achievement of winning the Pro Tour. Our, by the way, our, our uh, Galvanic Relay ended up being pretty good. We got plenty of mana, a Wishclaw Talisman, another Galvanic Relay gonna be pretty good to churn through our opponent's interaction with this galvanic relay now there's also a brainstorm in that pile that i am not going to be casting i'm saying that out loud so that i don't forget and accidentally cast it and definitely something that i would do and there's the natural order okay so let's see, I think that the bug has been fixed so that I actually see what cards they've taken. Um, Bryant, happy birthday. Hello. It is Leovold. Leovold and Atraxa. Um, the old and the new multicolor natural order target i guess i don't know um so they have a number of spells they could get cards they could get right they can get lands as well so we've got days force of will brainstorm as their instant Ponder and, and Green Sun Zenith as a sorcery, and then their pick of some basic lands or some fetch lands. Um, they chose Daze, Misty, and Ponder. And they're casting the Ponder. Wild that they chose Days um, instead of Force of Will, but they might not have other blue cards. Chose to shuffle their library. Okay. Uh, Dark Ritual is pretty good. Start off with a land and a bobble and a lotus petal. Okay, so let's go for a rite of flame, see what happens. And a dark ritual. And another dark ritual. And a Wishclaw Talisman. That resolved. Interesting. Okay. So... Hmm. They have a Daze, which I can play around. Right, I can, so I have six man in my pool, and then I have activate Wishclaw Talisman, cast a Silence, pay for days. The six mana is representing the other Wishclaw Talisman activation for Ad Nauseam, if I need it. Um... Let's go for a silence and see what happens. And it's going to be a silence. You know, I don't know exactly the list that Reed Duke was playing. I, I doubt that it was playing something like Misdirection. 
but there are some weird things that people could be doing in Legacy. I know... Okay, so Force of Will, that's just fine. So, 7, 8, 9, 10. Our opponent's representing 10 damage. I could... I could disrespect them and get a tutor at Burning Wish for a sideboard Tendrils of Agony. If they daze, then I can Galvanic Relay. Hmm. I think that I need to try to win this game right now because I've given them a tutor. I doubt that my situation is going to get better. And then if this gets um, dazed, then Okay, there's the days. Do I even bother paying? Yes. Um, black. Because I still have this galvanic relay that I can cast with this lotus petal over here. They had the double days. I am not going to pay for a second days. And now I can Galvanic Relay for 12. They have 10 damage. Um, hmm. I didn't get a Burning Wish from there. Or another Wish Claw Talisman. I have a lot of Brainstorms. That's not super good. Oh man, I forgot to crack bobble on my end step um, because of this Leopold. I meant to do that and then I got distracted. Um, that's all right. Okay. Um, Veil of Summer may be in their hand. Absolutely. It certainly could be. Okay. Well... That is not going to do. I don't have any outs because the Leovold is preventing me from drawing any cards with the brainstorms. That's too bad. That double days kind of kind of did it. Okay, that's all right. My opponent put a Traxa in, and we actually had a chance, so can't be too upset with that. Um, Bant natural order. It's actually four color. You know, we saw that underground sea. I wonder what that's for. Um, I should assume that they have collector oofs. Whether I want to bring in more than two prismatic endings, I'm not 100% sure on. Obviously, they're force of will deck. They're essentially just bant control with a combo finish, right? Um, I even think that somebody said that. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I actually want to do any sideboarding. If I were to sideboard, it would probably be like a slaughter pact and a couple of prismatic endings. And I would cut maybe a galvanic relay. I don't like shaving things, but this is not a matchup that I'm particularly ready for, right? Um, so if I were to shave Galvanic Relay, 
Maybe a Mox Opal and a Mishra's Bobble. Um, I don't know if I need the Prismatic Endings, right? Maybe just, uh, yeah, I should probably have it. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's not lose to Collector Oof, and we'll just try to get games two and three. This is pretty good. Uh, I like this hand. We're gonna keep this. Um, oof, yeah, answers to oof. That does make sense, I agree. Okay, so we are going to, it's really good, Owen. Yes, it's very good. It's, it's really good. Uh, okay, Underground C, I'm going to, oh, that was an F6 from our opponent. I'm not cast, I'm not floating mana off of the Mox Opal. It was kind of on purpose. I didn't know what mana I wanted, whether it was going to need to be blue or need to be red. I didn't want to make that decision, and I have a lot of artifacts in my deck anyway. I didn't need to make that decision. I could postpone it. Okay, so as much as I would like to ad nauseum, the fact that I have likely wheeled my opponent into a um, force of will based on the fact that they have stopped F6-ing, I'm going to... Ah, it would be really nice if we had a progenitor ooze here, right? Um, I kind of want to claw for a galvanic relay. And that should give me... And I'm not going to burn this dark ritual, right? I, I have enough mana. I have enough storm. Yeah, I think it's gonna be Galvanic Relay. This is gonna protect against wheeling them into counter magic, right? Um, 15 minutes late. Uh, oh, playback speed is fantastic. Yes, absolutely. One of the greatest things about YouTube is being able to adjust the playback. Okay, so we have revealed a couple of orange chants. Lotus Petal, a lot of lands, another Galvanic Relay. Not great. Not a single piece of action other than Galvanic Relay, which admittedly is very good. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out. Our opponent is playing Ponder, activating Wishclaw Talisman, Ponder, okay. Oh, thanks, Goffman. Uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, you can check out the VOD afterwards, but hopefully you have a good rest of your time. Uh, day, evening, morning, I don't know. Ambiguous. The future. Burning Wish was fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to play a Scrubland. Couple of lotus petals. And I'm gonna start off with an Orm's Chant. Burning Wish was perfect because um, I believe that we can Orm's Chant one, that can be just fine. We can Orm's Chant again, and I believe we still have Peer into the Abyss up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, we have Peer into the Abyss. So they need three pieces of interaction to stop us here. They don't. So I can float some mana, hold priority, or hold control, rather, and crack my Lion's Eye Diamond and tutor up Peer into the Abyss. And I will target myself with Peer into the Abyss. Eat your heart out, Leovold, Emissary of Trust. Now, this is easy mode. Resolving a Peer into the Abyss is fun for me, less fun for my opponent. 
concessions can happen at any time though. Um, I have some Chrome Moxes, which is nice. I can exile this ad nauseum, which I'm not gonna cast. Take a brainstorm, Just taking the deck out for a spin, as it were. And then Tendrils of Agony. Now, I guess they could technically have something like an Elvish Spirit Guide and a Veil of Summer, but that is Unlikely. Okay, cool. We won game two on turn two. Strong showing. Let's try it again. Uh, just cast the Moxin and wish for tendrils as opposed to like doing everything else. Um, if something went horribly wrong, um, oh, I chanted them. That's right. I forgot I chanted them. That's why, Nick. Um, yeah. Just miss, missed that little portion of the, the earlier turn. Uh, that's all right. Okay. This is going to be a keep. This is a turn two ad nauseum, and I'd like to draw some protection. Make sure to hydrate, guys. Bant Natural Order. Probably a really fun deck to pilot. Um, our opponent has mulligan to six. Um, I'm a little worried about a turn to... A turn two collector oof. Uh, let's see. So this is six total mana. I could goblins here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, goblins. Goblins it is. Let's empty the warrens, huh? This could be a minor misstep. Uh, let's get a white land that can cast Dark Ritual so that if this doesn't work out and they have a turn two Collector Oof, that I have the ability to Prismatic Ending. What does my opponent have to say to this? Not sure. Something, perhaps. Flusterstorm. Alrighty. That's a good one. Um, Bryant. Uh, so, everybody knows the normal happy birthday song, right? Uh, this is six. I cannot pay. Uh, one second. Let me let me get through my turn, and I will actually sing a like a dirge. Oh shit. Okay, I'll concede. My opponent knows what's up. If I was playing Ave, then this wouldn't happen. But uh, alrighty, I lost that one. But there's a birthday dirge that is pretty interesting um so oh to each storm trigger um anyway it goes a little bit like this i apologize for butchering things but happy birthday happy birthday 
People die, people cry. Happy birthday. And it's just a funeral dirge as a birthday song. It's fun. So um, now that we have sung Bryant a happy birthday, a happy birthday song, not the happy birthday song, just one, I'm going to let him actually talk to you a little bit while the league uh, gets paired up. He's going to tell you a little bit about where you can read about all of our shenanigans as a site team, theepicstorm.com. As a Patreon supporter, you can support us and get me on stream more often so that I can sing more weird birthday songs. Yep. That's what's going to happen. So let me tell you a little bit about that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsfirm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Alrighty, it is time to combo indeed. Um, we are paired up and we are on the draw against Phyrexian Wombat, who has mulliganed to six cards. And I like my seven. This is pretty decent, well-rounded. Mishra's Bobble. Turn one Wishclaw Talisman if I want it. I'm going to keep this. Their uh, their username is pretty familiar. I don't know who Phyrexian Wombat is, but I'm sure I've played them before. Mm. Blue Red Delver, maybe? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, okay. They have played a Scalding Tarn. And are passing the turn. I wonder if they're... So my guesses right now are either Show and Tell or they're playing a Delverless Delver deck. Um that's playing like mercurial mercurial spell dancer and trying to go over the top of um, typical delver decks so i don't want to run this wishclaw talisman out into even a hard cast days you see that that's nonsense but i will play out the bauble we need to be drawing some action this lion's eye diamond was allowing me to turn the mox opal on um, and step brainstorm i'm likely using this mishra's bauble to scry uh, as opposed to gain any in information about my opponent uh, if they are show and tell then we can put this wish claw talisman in and likely uh, attempt to win on our next turn, but it doesn't look like it's happening. They are blue-red, chose not to shuffle their ponder. Hmm. All right. They're really going for it. And they chose to shuffle that ponder. Um, a little bizarre, but that's okay. We're going to bobble ourselves. A Bloodstained Mire is not the worst, but I think that we can do better. I'll get a Volcanic Island of our own. And the bobble is an Ad Nauseum. Hey, that's pretty good. That's really good. Okay, let's put the heat on. Um, Let's start off with Lion's Eye Diamond. 
and the Mox Opal, and then a Chrome Mox. The reason I did it in this order is I don't think that I'm actually imprinting anything to this Chrome Mox, and if I did that first, it would let my opponent know that the Mox Opal that I am then casting is really important. Um, because I played a Chrome Mox and didn't imprint anything. So uh, that Mox Opal would be very important. And I don't think that I want to let them know that. Now, I could just imprint a Rite of Flame, but casting the Rite of Flame is gonna get me more mana. So I would like to do that. I'm not going to imprint right, Nick, uh, for all the reasons I just said. Um, this way, I can Wish Claw Talisman and Ad Nauseum. And they're brainstorming here, finding an answer potentially, right? Uh, maybe they didn't have a force in hand. Maybe they wanted two forces in hand. They've got a force and they've pitched a daze. Okay, well, what about ad nauseum? And I'm going to crack this. Let's do this the right way. Flow to red, crack for black. How are we doing? You have two forces? You do have two forces. You have one card in hand. They had double daze. All right. Hmm. Now I pitched two dazes. Mismatched dazes. Come on. Come on. Um. <clears throat> oh well. Two cards in hand. What are we gonna do? Expressive iteration. That's a good follow up. Okay. Uh, Merc tide incoming. Yeah, maybe. It'd be a pretty big Merc tide, wouldn't it be? Blooded Strand for our opponent. That gives them a Mystic Sanctuary. Um, and a Wasteland. Okay. Yikes. I felt fairly confident about our position. And then I am... My confidence is waning. Let's put it that way. Um... Oh, Doyle, I think that that's actually a little bit wrong. Um, Storm loses to three Force of Wills a lot. Storm doesn't really lose to two Force of Wills all that often. Um, we're, we're kind of designed to beat point interaction, um, but it didn't work out that way because we didn't have that third thing, but usually we can build up to three threats, right? We have an Orem's Chant, and then a Wishclaw Talisman, and then an Ad Nauseum, and those are all three must-counter threats. There's that Murktide Regent we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brainstorm, not bad. Oh yeah, Bryant, I think that that was a very good spot to push, but it just didn't didn't, didn't work out, so that's fine. Um, they were not doing anything, so I think that I might be able to infer my opponent knows what I'm doing, Storm, and kept a hand that was particularly good against Storm, but... Um, I also was thinking, oh, they're on a little bit of a slower build. They didn't start on Delver. They didn't start on Darcy. Maybe they have a lower number of those early cards, but it looks like they just kept a hand that was tailor-made to, be, to beat Storm. Um, woof. Okay. Um, so Silva, 
minor misstep is probably not very popular in vintage. Uh, this is legacy and it is gaining in popularity in legacy for sure. Um, I think that I think that it's a good card in the format. I, I think that it offers very powerful things to be doing um, in a fair card. This is not mental misstep, which is disgustingly broken. But minor misstep, reasonable, reasonable card for legacy format. Um, so something about version 13.7, by the way, um, you can find all of our sideboard guides on our Patreon. Um, you get early access to the sideboard guides. Um, well, you get access to the sideboard, ga sideboard guides, period. Um, but one of the little things that we've done with this version 13.7 was we designed it that we're actually not sideboarding against Delver at all. Um, we don't want thought seizes. We don't want prismatic endings, crashes, slaughter packs, not very good cards. Um, we're all good. We're going to hit resubmit. I would like to play first. Ooh. Um, oh, man. Okay. So this hand is pretty reliant on Brainstorm. And it's one land. Uh, not the greatest. I think that I'm going to keep it. But I'm going to recognize that mana product production um, is going to be the bottleneck. And against the four Wasteland deck, I want to kind of think about that um went before i before i crack my scalding tarn right um we'll see we'll have to see how this goes okay let me just play the scalding tarn and pass Mishra's Bobble. And they are scrying themselves. And they don't want it. Okay. I wonder if this is a minor misstep. They get to draw. Mm -hmm. Wish Gone Talisman. Okay, I'm going to pass the turn. I'm not going to play into their very clearly telegraphed interaction. Um, you know, this open volcanic island on turn one from Delver or Delver adjacent things. Counterbalance. Mm, okay. I am going to brainstorm now. So this is exactly the problem that version 13.7 had um, compared to other versions of the Epic Storm is our particular weakness to this card right here, which is seeing a little bit of a re renaissance now, which is why we have um, started playing things like Ave Progenitor Ooze, which you know, if we can play a Wishclaw Talisman and then just cast a bunch of things into the counterbalance, we can usually use the Talisman to fetch up the ooze and smash. Um, as it stands, this list in particular doesn't have a great counterbalance matchup. No reveal. Okay. I like that. Scrum Mox is likely to imp Oh, they revealed a ponder. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. I am going to 
play this Wish Claw Talisman into a daze, into a force of will. I am aware that this is not an ideal spot to be. Um, I don't have an advantage to press. I am behind and I need to get a little lucky. And that Wish Claw Talisman resolved. So that's okay by me. I'm going to use this Mishra's Bobble. So I have another Burning Wish on top of my library. Um, I'm not going to use this Mishra's Bobble immediately. What I'm going to do is wait until I have a combo turn and actually use it to check the counterbalance before I commit a spell to the stack that counterbalance can then interact with. And I kept one on car one card on top with Darcy. Ugh, wasteland. Okay. Do I need to reevaluate my bauble now? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Brainstorm. Okay. So, draw the Burning Wish and an Orm's Chant. All right. We will pass. Uh, Nardolphin finally made it back. Excellent. Adnaz in response to Brainstorm. I'm not 100% sure how we would do that. Um, like now, this Wish Claw Talisman, so we, we don't have enough mana to do that first off. And then this Wish Claw Talisman can only be activated on my turn. Oh, they had, four, oh, you're talking about in game one. Um, they might have had two forces. Um, I have no idea. I don't think that it was worth trying to preemptively make decisions um, before my opponent let the Wish Claw Talisman either resolve or not, right? Because I would, if they had one piece of interaction, then I would want that interaction spent on the Wish Claw Talisman and not um, the Ad Nauseum, right? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't think that this is going to work out for me. Uh, reveal. Ponder. And cast the ponder. Okay. Put one card on top. That's uh, pretty good for them. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something that we could draw that would turn this game around. And... Um, they chose not to shuffle. It's kind of terrifying. Rite of Flame is not it, but let's see. Okay, I'll concede here. I was trying to like dark ritual something out. Maybe they put some zeros on there. I could dark ritual out a Wish Claw Talisman for next turn but I think that that's just going to be it. Unfortunately, uh, we are 0-2 to start the league. Uh, pretty close games that I probably could have managed to win one of against Bant Natural Order, and then uh, this just now with Blue Red Delver. So I'm going to start queuing into our next opponent. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about where you can hear some of the new stuff like Bant Natural Order featuring Atraxa, 
counterbalance problems with the Epic Storm and the influx of Ave Progenitor Ooze. Bryant talks about it with two of his friends, Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher, on Eternal um, Glory. Excuse me, almost forgot. Now let me uh, let me tell you just a little bit about that. It's going to take just a second. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. See how quick that was? Awesome. Um, our opponent has yet to be queued into us, or we have yet to be queued into an opponent. Um, but that's just fine. So let's see. The the new um, league started early February, and we already have some people with eight undefeated trophies. Pretty good. Uh, a handful with a two with seven. A handful with six. Less with five actually. Um, very interesting. I have no trophies yet. I'm working on it. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be this league. Uh, yesterday, I was playing a league. I think that Bryant actually was in a Discord call. Uh, or, well, we were. he was playing Pioneer and I was playing Legacy. Uh, we were in the same Discord call and then people were just kind of hanging out and watching us. Um, but I was 4080 into a league and then got um, absolutely trounced in my last matchup um, to take the trophy out from under me. It was a bad matchup and I played it. Uh, I tempted fate a little bit too much, let's say. But it ended up working just fine. I, I still got the 4-1 and I was pretty excited about that. I think that there might be an infernal tutoring scenario um, from one of those games. I guess you'll have to find out next month. Let's see. Tomorrow, actually, Infernal Tutoring uh, for February goes live for all of the non-Patreons. You can actually read about that as early as um, tomorrow, 10 Central, I think. I think it might, it might release earlier than that. I'd have to check. But we've got a really cool article coming out this month. All righty. Hmm. You know, I should probably look up my opponent. Um, Phyrexian Wombat. You know, um, I seem to remember that I've played them a lot. But I might, I might just be mistaken. Uh, I've played them twice. I uh, do not have a winning record against them. I don't even have a tied record against them. But that's all right. Oh, they were playing Cloud Post before. Eldrazi Cloud Post. Wow. Eldrazi Cloud Post and Dungeon Stompy. What a time. Okay. Oh, they were uh they were my opponent for one of my earlier streams. That's my that might be why I recognize them. That's kinda cool. Uh DN solver. Okay. On the play. I'm gonna keep this. This is a good hand. Yep. Started us off strong. Bloodstained Meyer pass. Super strong start. Could be Reanimator, could be Storm. It's really the only main decks that play Bloodstained Meyer right now. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, goblins. But I said main deck, right? So, who knows? What are you doing? Chalice of the Void. I will brainstorm here. 
I'll get a volcanic island so that I can cast a galvanic relay or something like that. Hmm. Okay. So, this is actually kind of interesting. I have two mountains, and I have, if you'll see, a pulverize in the sideboard. I wonder if this is initiative. Okay, well, let's resolve this first. Go back to the Rite of Flame and the Dark Ritual. Chalice can resolve. Nisha's Bobble, so this is eight cast. Okay. Let's see about this Burning Wish. I would like to grab a Pulverize, and they might not let me. Oh, they are gonna let me grab it. I don't know if they'll let me resolve it. I won't resolve it right now, and of course. Um, but I can float some mana and relay next turn. They didn't crack the Bobbles. They have four cards in hand. Um, hmm. Thought cast it is. Eight cast is not a terribly favorable matchup. The pulverize in the sideboard, the crash that we have access to, those are all definitely help. Uh, helpers in the matchup. So they have seen a Chrome Mox and the top of our deck, which is a Rite of Flame. So they have four cards in hand. They'll draw up to six. And... Oh boy. So... Let's cast the purple elephant, or the pink elephant, excuse me, this is pink. It resolved, wow, okay. Um, actually was not expecting that. I was expecting it to eat a force of will and then we would have dealt with the fallout later on, but Apparently, I didn't have to worry about that. I am going to imprint, right? I am low, 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 low on initial mana, so even the littlest bit can help. Lion's Eye Diamond, Mox Opal, Burning Wish, Ad Nauseam, Bloodstained Mire, Underground Sea. These are good cards. So I can Ad Nauseam next turn. They didn't have a force this turn. So, unless they drew one for turn, they won't have a force now. I wonder if they're thinking about playing a chalice on zero. Hmm. Three cards in hand. Yeah, it's a chalice on zero. Hey. It's kind of rough. I don't like that. But it is what they were thinking about. Hmm. I I doubt I can win this game, but I still have prismatic ending. Um, Brick chains, how's it going, Benny? Um, let's see. My prismatic ending that I can go wish for, which is not nothing. 
Um, Bloodstained Mire can't get a red source because I have sacrificed... Oh, wait, no, no, no. Ah, geez. Okay. Yes, it can. Okay. Lion's Eye Diamond gets countered. Mox Opal gets countered. And that's all things that we knew were going to happen. Um... Okay, so I have an answer to the chalice on zero, which is something. It's not nothing, anyway. Um, end of turn, they'll probably sack a couple of thopters to draw a couple of cards. Yeah. Okay, are you going to do it again? Probably not. Hmm. Okay, so they get Thopters. They get a Thought Monitor. More Thopters. They've got themselves a little army. Psy Master's Thopterist. Army in a can. Their storm happens after their spell resolves. Ours is Empty the Warrens or Ave Progenitor Ooze. That all happens after the storm. <laughs> Four mana. I mean, this might just be a turtle. Interesting. Okay. Ottawara, their own creature. Draw more cards. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. They have three cards in hand. I'm taking two. Wish Claw is a good follow up. X is zero. Doesn't matter. Do they have the force? No. Would you look at that? Now I can deploy this wish claw talisman. Okay. And next turn, I can echo a Vions, potentially. Um, this is kind of a mess, honestly. Um, our opponent has not found the cards that they need. This thought monitor might get them there though I did unlock all of their zeros so if they have Urza's baubles Mishra's baubles then they're not just opters they are going to be cards in hand instead they have a bunch of thought monitors a uh, bunch of draw twos all chained together. Uh, pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Looks like I was just a turn too late. Um, oh boy. Pop out the graveyards. Make it easier to see, but not that it really matters. They don't have an Emery. I don't have an Echo yet. And I'm taking a bunch. Eight. Okay. Yeah, they totally could have found another Chalice. Um, I don't know. This is gonna be, frankly, a miracle if we end up actually getting the W this game uh, in game one. Uh, huge, 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 huge. But, yeah, okay, Chalice on zero, they are presenting lethal. 
and okay. Actually, hold up. Let's float black here. I'm not going to be able to cast any more artifacts. Um, so the first match was up against Bant Natural Order. Um, it's wild, honestly. Um, okay. Ooh, hey, uh, super rolled by loam. That doesn't sound very good, but hey, sea bug. Okay, I need a blue source. So volcanic island. This chalice. Okay, that's gonna be it. I really needed to find action and the one prismatic ending that I had in the deck, uh, and I did not do that. And they have lethal on board. So unfortunately, a very good player has prevailed. Um, okay, so crash. Let's see. I can actually probably look up the sideboard guide for thirteen seven. Um, yeah. So against eight cast, uh, we're gonna be on the play. So we're gonna bring in three prismatic endings, a, thought, a crash, three thought seizes. This is the difference. We're bringing in thought seizes on the play. And we're pl taking out four brainstorms. The chalices are gonna really crush us. And then three galvanic relays. And that's it, yeah. Okay. Helpful to have a nice sideboard guide. It's been a little while since I've played um, this. Yeah, uh, Dolphin, uh, Traxa was the payoff. They also had Leovold. Um, so 13.7 is the um, showcase challenge top eight list actually from, um, oh my gosh, completely forgotten. I'm sorry, I'll look up the name. Um, but 13.7 was the, the the showcase challenge list that top aided, which was pretty exciting to see. Um, but not quite the updated one. We really did struggle against Counterbalance a little while ago against Delver, where I think that it might have been a little bit better if uh, we had a Progenitor Ooze, but um, that's totally fine. I feel bad for forgetting. I'm trying to look up the name again. Karate Dom. There we go. Karate Dom. That was their top eight. Uh, yes, I would like to play first. And um, yeah, I'm going to keep this one. Okay, so they're likely a uh, eight force of will deck. Not going to be something that I'm just jamming. Uh, however, I think that this is a nice, well-rounded hand. It's got a lot of what we need I could technically attempt to win this turn, um, but that's just not going to happen. Uh, very unlikely that we come up against an opponent that has kept a, well, mulligan to six. Okay, well, we'll see. If they mulligan into oblivion, then I will reconsider going off right now, but not likely to happen. Hmm. 
They are pondering their six. They've kept their six. Okay. Um, I can't do anything yet, so I won't. The, the ability to combo off that turn was built into Dark Ritualing out Wish Claw Talisman, playing out Mox Opal Lion's Eye Diamond. The Mox Opal could tap for red for the Rite of Flame, and then we could uh, spend one of the floating mana, uh, one black, two red, to activate the Wish Claw Talisman, probably floating a black and a red, go get an Echo of Eons and Echo. Wait a second, was that an ad nauseum as well? That could have been an ad nauseum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it was a turn one ad nauseum. Yeah, never mind. We didn't have to echo. It was a turn one ad nauseum. Um, what else is Leovold good against? Uh, blue decks with Brainstorm and Ponders, I guess. Um, it was a one of as a Green Sun Zenith target. It was fine. Um, they played it and it it did end up winning the game for them because we couldn't find action off of our galvanic relay for 11 because we revealed three brainstorms and they had lethal on board so it did end up shutting us down but it uh did not look good against galvanic relay where we could just put cards in our hand turn after turn and uh, it was just kind of sitting there. I did misplay a little bit. I forgot to crack my bobble on my turn so that I could draw it. And then when I realized that, um, it was too late. But uh, I could have had one extra card to see that turn before I died. Um, but it ended up not working out. Okay, Graph Digger's Cage. Totally fine. Worthless piece of card, but against us. Not worthless, right? They technically can echo, but very unlikely to. Okay. Hmm. And what I could do, I will have the mana to ad nauseum next turn. What I want to do is bait the Wish Claw Talisman. Nope. Okay. I really wish that they had tried countering something. Hmm. Just resolved. Okay. Okay. So... We can definitely add nauseum next turn. If we find an additional mana. Ugh, okay. Um, we can still add nauseum. We just can't necessarily do it. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Okay, uh, I will play out some zeros. Um. We have three prism. Oh, well, hold up. Oh man, we have three prismatic endings. I could have thought about getting one of those now. Uh, probably wouldn't have worked. No, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, never mind. We need a little bit more mana to try to talisman for a prismatic ending and go off at the same time. They are on Construct Beatdowns. This is pretty good. This can get a Pulverize. Mm, or a Prismatic Ending. I think it's gonna be the Prismatic Ending. 
Like the Pulverize could work, but they're about to get this Urza Saga, which is going to like probably get a Pithing Needle to shut down the Wishclaw Talismans. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep, make a 5-5, five, five, so it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow. Mm-hmm. Could be an 8-8 eight, eight if they soul land and make another construct. So I could be at 11. Okay. No pithing needle, by the way. I think that might be interesting. I don't know. They have two cards in hand. Hmm. They see a thought sees. There are Urza's bobble. I'm not liking my position right now. Uh, we are not like super doomed yet. Obviously we are facing lethal down, but we have a turn to present lethal and we are going to be presenting that. They have two, three cards in hand now. If it's force blue card or metallic rebuke or something like that, then I certainly don't want to be me, but we can present lethal here. So what I'm going to do is pay X equals one, two total mana for the prismatic ending. I wonder if this is worth a force. It's not. Okay. Respect. I don't think that I can plan around Force of Will. Like they had Cage into Chalice. Maybe Force Blue card actually was good in the reason they kept their hand. It might have been just Cage and Chalice. Those are, those are reasonable things to keep on a mulligan to six, right? Um, hmm. Okay, so we'll get a Lion's Eye Diamond. This will allow us to... Ad nauseum. Mm, floating a red, I think. Which is a little weird, but we have thought seizes instead of galvanic relays, and they do have the blue card. Okay. Oh well. Oh and three. Not a great look for the deck right now. Um, that's okay. The, the, the showcase challenge is such a specific metagame that, that the deck was actually built to beat. Um, I can imagine it doing better than in leagues, but we have come up against Three very popular decks, eight cast, blue red Delver. Uh, well, maybe blue red Delver. It was blue red. Not sure if it had Delver in it or not. And then Bant, natural order. So 
popular popular decks in the format right now, especially with the Atraxas printing for Natural Order. Um, eight cast is routinely a bad matchup, and we did come up against um, Counterbalance, which is not something that version 13.7 that ended up top eighting the showcase um, was designed to combat. There's no outs to counterbalance um, other than prismatic ending. Those are not cards that we are going to board in against blue red Dulver. So we could technically get to a burning wish prismatic ending line, but um, yeah. So Seabug, yeah, league and showcase metas are a little bit different. Showcase challenges, uh, you have to qualify for. You have to earn enough QPs, qualifying points, to enter in the first place. Anybody can enter a league, but you have to actually be a good player. Um, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to earn 40 qualifying points, but you still have to do it. So you're a good player. And with that being the case, um, when you enter into this event, this is, this is like the next level of competitiveness. So you're going to be hopefully playing a deck either really, really well or that you think is really, really good. And most of the time, good players are also playing good decks. So you're going to be seeing more blue-red Delver than you would in leagues, probably. More mono-white initiative than you would see in leagues, probably. And less random stuff like mono black helm or goblins or something like that, right? Um, get dunked. I hope my opponent gets dunked and not us, right? Hmm. Okay. I'm on the play with no action whatsoever. Okay, this is, uh, I don't normally do this for streams, but I am actually going to Google our opponent. Uh, they play Delver. Okay, I'm not gonna keep this against Delver. Against a uh, non-blue, I would, I would definitely keep it, but not against Delver. We would have needed to draw too well. Yeah, Seabug, you betcha. I'm glad that that actually ended up helping you understand a little bit about like the differences in meta. It's not that much of a difference, but just because of the competitiveness of a, a league, which is relatively low competition um, compared to a higher stakes event, right? Um, plus you don't run into streamers playing the Epic Storm. Ponder chose not to shuffle. Lion's Eye Diamond is good. Now I could Dark Ritual out this Galvanic Relay. What I think I want to do is end step Brainstorm and then see what's going on. Uh, turn one Ponder and no threat means that I have a little bit more time than I would normally. A turn at least, right? There's the Delver. Um, actually, I think I want to brainstorm on my turn, right? Because I want that storm count. Okay. Let's brainstorm. This could eat a Pyroblast. This could eat a Minor Misstep. Minor Misstep. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just pass. They did have to shuffle, so they don't actually know. They did keep off the Ponder, and they chose specifically to not shuffle. So this is a blind flip off of the Delver. Odds are, yeah, okay, Minor Misstep. Look at that. Um, that's not really something that I can play around. I have to just play into 
and I have to play into it as effectively as possible, right? If I want my brainstorm to resolve, maybe I play the silence first. If I want my silence to resolve, maybe I play the brainstorm or the dark ritual first. I definitely want my lion's eye diamond to resolve, so I might have to wait. Ugh. Okay. Not great. Wasteland definitely hurt. Another land is pretty good. Uh, minor misstep is posing a problem. I think I have to pass. You know, I did say that I wanted that storm for, uh, count when I said brainstorm on my main phase instead of my end step, or my opponent's end step. If I had done that two turns previously, then this game might look a little bit differently. I might have already resolved a galvanic relay. Um, who knows? Okay, opponent chooses to shuffle. So, lands are going to be Scrubland, Volcanic Island. So this needs to get the Volcanic Island. Brainstorm, Minor Misstep maybe. Brainstorm in my hand, I think. No, no, I don't. I want to draw the silence. Okay. And now... I am not going to play this dark ritual. Uh, I could. Hey, Michael. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing tonight? Um, my record uh, there isn't looking the greatest. Uh, I'm having a pretty good time despite that, though. Um, so I could actually play the silence as bait and still have enough to Dark Ritual Galvanic Relay. They have five cards in hand, though. Uh, we'll see. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Ah, oh, don't worry about the league. It's actually secondary. Like, my results are secondary to getting to hang out, learning some new lines, talking through it with you all. Uh, definitely not the main goal of the stream. So let's see. We have an Echo, a Plateau, an Orange Chant, Mishra's Bobble, and a couple of Fetch Lands. Eh, could be worse, could be better. Um, we can hard cast this Echo, and we have Chant, so... Oh. Lightning Bolt. Okay. How many of those do you have? You need two? Okay. Whew. A little worried. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is interesting. So my initial thought is, heck yeah, my opponent exiled a daze to their expressive iteration. But actually, that just means that what they have is better than daze, right? You can just, instead of being like, oh my god, they forgot, they misclicked or whatever. Uh, no, they're probably a smart opponent. And I'm probably not going to like it. Uh, Caleb, hello. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, three days. Yeah, 
three three days total. Um, actually, I'm gonna play this out. Play the bobble. Play the chant, targeting my opponent. So I can actually hard cast Echo and then flash it back, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so hmm, I'm actually not going to float mana off of the Mox Opal. I have this Mishra's Bobble. I have many artifacts in my deck. So um, I will likely be able to turn it on and I don't necessarily want to shoehorn myself into a decision. Whew, that was good. Okay. Shoehorn myself into a decision without knowing what I need. Um, but as it stands, this was pretty good. Obviously a little worrisome because if this doesn't resolve, I'm relying on the Galvanic Relay and my opponent is going to be putting me at one and they are a Lightning Bolt deck, so uh, oh, that does sound like fun. Caleb, sounds like a great time. Uh, okay, Burning Wish does not resolve. We understand that. Uh, something that I am going to do is limit my possibilities for screw-ups by um, drawing a card with Mishra's Bobble in their upkeep. If I draw a silence, that will prevent them from digging for a um, lightning bolt. I have the white open. Nope. Oh, okay. If they have it, they have it. I did as best I could. They are certainly dead next turn, um, but we do have to get there. They chose to not shuffle. Um, okay. I mean, they're, they're seeing six cards, seven with their draw step, which I knew was not actually there's a Misty Rainforest. Or, Misty Rain, flood, flood of Strand. Okay, do they have the Lightning Bolt? Don't make me wait. Did we, did we get there? Also, one, one turn down. Uh, Relay was way better than Echo, I, I believe. Um, I guess we could have done both. Um, but I didn't want them to be able to draw into another bolt. Um, that was my thinking anyway. Maybe I was wrong. I might have actually wanted to consider that a little bit more SW. Uh, well, Nick, I hard cast the Echo, but I had it in my graveyard, and I could have actually flashed it back with uh, Lion's Eye Diamond. As it stands, my opponent had nothing. And I get to lay into them for a little bit. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so, eh. Just float all of the mana that I need. Not worry about anything else. Oh boy. Okay. Good, 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 good. 
Um, now we've said this before, but version 13.7, the, the deck that top aided the legacy showcase this Sunday, last Sunday, um, no sideboarding against Delver. Now, uh, we have talked about the, um, the problems as it stands against counterbalance. Uh, we don't have outs to counterbalance right now, which is pretty standard as a two of. Um, I could bring in Prismatic Ending, which is really not that great against anything but counterbalance. And even then it's a very lackluster answer because it can be countered, right? Um, it's not abrupt decay. I could bring in Thought Seizes, but that is really not good against a deck that I want to preserve my life total. My life total is at risk. Um, I think that this is just gonna be a resubmit. We just have to know if they counterbalance us and we have to play better than our opponent and trick them into putting something on top that they didn't want, or they thought they wanted, but we wanted instead. Uh, but this seven is not going to allow us to do that. This six. Ugh. I'll keep this six. It's not great. Um, it eats it to a wasteland. It has protection, it has a brainstorm as action, and it's got a little bit of, eh, maybe I'm gonna just mulligan this. It doesn't have all that much mana, right? We These chrome moxes are not going to tap for anything. One of them's gonna go back. I'm gonna mulligan. I've convinced myself. Uh, this is fine, I'll keep this. I'll put back a burning wish and a, Mox Opal. Okay. See what happens. Volcanic Island and a Darcy. Okay. This calling turn was good. Uh, well played. Uh, SW, I think that I played as best as I could on stream, but I also think that we got very lucky to have our opponent see a fresh seven and dig seven more cards and not hit a lightning bolt. That was uh, that was pretty huge. That one was only partially up to me. Orm's Chant, that's nice. Something tells me that they were holding up a, ment a minor misstep. Like they played the Darcy and I mean, they could have not had a ponder. They could have not had this brainstorm or whatever. Um, something tells me that they're holding a minor misstep. open mana no delirium I'm taking two that's all good to go and step I'm not gonna play into the minor misstep that I am suspecting um, hmm. now I might I might brainstorm because it'll allow me to I think I still have to just pass. Also, um, shout out to a friend of mine, uh, Vile Chill, because he just sent me a picture of my face on a big, D big TV. And uh, 
I don't I don't need to be up on there. I'm more of like a like a huddle on your phone like this kind of a thing. That's the quality of my stream. Uh, I don't know about big ass TVs, but whatever. Uh, Joseph, uh, what percentage of the meta needs to be off of initiative to go back to green for abrupt decay? Oh boy, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Um, I would like, so abrupt decay is not bad against the initiative, it's just expensive. Um, I think that I don't have a, a specific percentage in mind, um, but we're, we're always considering green. I think that I played green, well, it was a five color. Um, it was a five color list that had green, but Abrupt Decay is really amazing. We've been searching and searching for something that actually would give us what we wanted when it came to uncounterable removal. We tried some other things that ended up not working very well, but um, yeah. we'll have to see Wasteland. I bet they've been holding that in their hand for a long time. Um, Bayou Taiga Vale for that. No initiative players. Seabug, that seems nice. Um, also, uh, music is uh, Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Really, really cool DMCA free music uh, from a content creator that I really like. Helped me learn about streaming, actually. It's been very nice. Um, <laughs> Those are not cards that I was super excited to see, but um Bryant, you are correct. It is a little bit of a tough night. Um, all right, I'm at eight. All of my fetches are gonna kill me. I can't echo, okay, I'll concede. Game three. Um, Oh, Joseph, yeah, Galvanic Relay and Popper. I never got to play all that much Popper when Galvanic Relay was legal in the format, but oh boy, did it look disgusting. Anytime, I mean, like Chatterstorm, any kind of, anytime a Storm deck is doing well, I'm really excited about it. Um, like, I never got to play Galvanic Relay in Popper or Chatterstorm and Popper or Underworld Breach and Legacy for all of the three weeks or so that it was legal. Um, but I, I, I do enjoy it when, is, when Storm is doing well, which is why we're playing this tonight. Uh, Storm won, or won, oh, I wish. Uh, Storm top aided the Legacy Showcase Challenge. Um, okay. Is this good enough? My cat thinks so. I'm going to keep it. I'm gonna uh, turn one a Wishclaw Talisman. Put it on, put a Wishclaw Talisman onto the stack, turn one, I should say. Probably should have, uh... no, that's fine. Okay, bobble my opponent. 
That tough love leads to W's. It certainly has in the past. Uh, expressive iteration from our opponent. I would like a silence, please. Well, another bobble. We'll see where things go. This is... And then step brainstorm. Okay, that's fine. Polluted Delta. All good. Are we counterbalancing? No, thank goodness. Ponder it is. Survey says shuffle, keep, no shuffle. All right. And draw for turn. Well, that's not bad. just opening myself up to things that I didn't need to. Um, hmm. I'm just going to pass. We have six cards in hand. One of them's an expressive iteration. I don't think that that echo was going to resolve means I probably should have kept the Lion's Eye Diamond for something like a relay. Uh, ooh. Are we activating Wish Claw Talisman? If that's the case, then they are not running the list that they normally do, and that means that I would have to expect a meltdown. is the tendrils main besides alex mckinley and only because he makes a joke about it every other time that it comes up uh tendrils main is not oh there's the galvanic really too mm, max punish um yeah the tendrils is not a not a factor that's in the main deck it, it doesn't really matter Yeah, the, the Wish Claw Talisman, by the way, the activation that they didn't actually end up paying for. Oof, okay. This game is over. Uh, they were trying to figure out if they had the mana to activate and then melt down for X equals two. They were one mana short from that. Uh, as it stands... I don't think that... We were getting any... Oh, okay, they kept in lightning bolts. I'll concede. Okay. Well... Did I go through? I don't think I actually hit the button. There it goes. Oh, 4 Alright. It's been a while since I've gone 0-4. Uh, 
Uh, let's see if we can salvage this embarrassment of a match. Uh, league, excuse me. Um, and not tarnish the reputation as much of the Legacy Showcase Top 8. Really do need to get good, don't I? That's okay. Your uh, tough love has already started working on me. By the way, um, if you want to get good, you can actually read some articles about how to get good. Alex McKinley has written a primer series on the Epic Storm called the ABCs of TES, a uh, name that I came up with. Thank you very much. Uh, I also write infernal tutoring articles that you can actually use as puzzles to solve to help get better at storm combo turns. Let me tell you a little bit about our Patreon that you can actually get access to a lot of this stuff. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Alrighty, that was quick. Quick and easy. Um, yeah, building that complaint equity is really important because then I can go to my locals and I can talk their ear off about not playing well and then crushing them because they can't beat Storm, which is just awesome. Um, I'm only saying that because there are three of my locals in chat right now. Uh, Vicky Minaj, yeah. Alex Main Deck Tendrils McKinley. Absolutely. Um, all right. Once my opponent. Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, Rinnegan89. I would like to play first. I would like to keep this hand. This is pretty all right. We can even pretend like we're a slow Delver hand with our Scalding Tarn, because that matters. Our opponent has mulliganed to six. Um, hmm. Okay. Play the Scalding Tarn and pass the turn. I hear my cat screaming in the closet he's just gotten into the closet and he's actually climbing up on my case and he's gonna sit on the sh on the top shelf he uh, likes getting there and then getting stuck so if he really starts screaming then he's stuck up there and i have to go get him down but i don't think that that's gonna happen Ooh, there's a saga okay um is this another eight cast matchup? I would not like that. Doesn't look like it. Is this painter? Hmm. Urza Saga doesn't typically equate to blue deck. Although, I totally could be playing uh, Blue Painter. Eight cast doesn't usually just start off with nothing. Hmm. Okay, I will play out a Lotus Petal just as a hedge with this silence in my hand. Um, yeah. Minor misstep is a pretty good card. Um, I still haven't gotten the hang of playing around minor misstep. Uh, it's something that I need to work on personally. Uh, I can recognize that it's there, right? My opponent has a minor misstep, but um, baiting it out making sure that I get the correct thing countered versus something that I actually care about. Not something that I'm quite good at yet. Um, it's a skill that I need to work on. Okay, so 
What the heck? My opponent does not have... Why did they play Saga? I mean... Oh. Oh. Is this Stifle Knot? They're just getting a giant Dreadnought, and they're trying to, like, Stifle it as soon as possible, so they have 12-12. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's count my mana. One, two, three, four, five. Not enough to add nauseum. Let's brainstorm and see if we can fix that. Ah, that's pretty good. Uh. Okay. So now I can. Ad Nas with silence backup. Silence them in their upkeep. Yeah, I can just silence them now and put Ad Nauseam onto the stack. Um, my brainstorm ended up being very good. This is a dress down. Oh, a daze. Huh. I'll pay for that. Uh, hold up. Do I want to pay for that? They have five cards in hand. Yeah, that's fine. I'll pay for it. They have a force. Okay. Now, I do want to brainstorm here. Hey, look at that. I get to put ad nauseum on the stack anyway. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. I can just put lethal onto the stack instead. Uh, Let's do that instead. We don't have to go through ad nauseum. We just have a lethal line. I saw the storm count in the corner of my eye that actually ended up being relevant now. My opponent cast two spells this turn for me. Very nice. Okay. Okay, I am going to play... They have days in their Urza Saga deck. I just now realized this. Like, I don't know. Um, hold up, Michael, uh, you just... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, okay. I'm going to play like their Stifle Knot. Uh, Blue Painter, you think, with days? Really? Like, maybe. Um, okay, so let's say they're Blue Painter. What are we doing here? We're doing this kind of a thing. Oh, they're Painter. Uh, Brainstorm is decent. Um, I really don't know. They could be, they could be Painter. They could be Stifle Knot. Um, like, I like the idea that they were playing the saga early so that they could stifle it and get a 12-12 as quick as possible, but um, paint or not, yeah. I think that this, maybe not the crash. Let's see. What if I do this? We saw so much blue, so I don't wanna. Man, do I just cut baubles entirely? That doesn't seem very good. Um, That doesn't seem that bad, though. Um, 
We'll try this. Cutting the galvanic relay package, right? Some zeros and the galvanic relays themselves for prismatic endings, thought seizes, and crashes. I'm sure that this is not right. I'm sure that if I gave this a little bit more thought that probably be a little bit more comfortable, but it doesn't matter. We're just gonna keep a excellent starting seven. Strand. I wonder if they're. Um, like. Stand still. I don't know. We really don't know about our opponent right now. This could be a minor misstep, for all I know. <clears throat> is doing. Tundra. Wait a second. Oh, there's cephalid breakfast. This is stupid. There's cephalid breakfast. Okay. We figured it out, guys. Uh, <clears throat> everything makes sense now. There's a daze. No. Okay. I wonder if we had a sideboard for a cephalid breakfast for 13.7. I don't think so. We didn't actually put it back in the sideboard guide until recently when it started picking back, picking up steam again. Uh, their ponder chose to shuffle, so that's nice. Silence, prismatic ending. Okay. think I can risk putting an unprotected peer onto the stack. It is wild how so many decks could have been produced from the exact same start of Urza Saga Basic Island Force, Daze, Ponder, Brainstorm. Uh, and it just so happens to be breakfast. It sounds really good right now. I've got a couple of eggs in my fridge. I might make an egg sandwich after this. Fry up some ham. Mm, okay, I'm sold. That's going to be dinner tonight. I would like a silence. I would like really, really just like a norm's chant or a silence.
Do they have the perfect brainstorm? I would imagine so. They're not making constructs with their saga, which is nice. Uh, this all happens at instant, well not instant speed, on their turn, like the tutor and they can play their card. Um, so they are presenting lethal next turn, um, which means that I need to present something now. Here, I'm playing around days. I'm not playing around any other kind of interaction whatsoever. Um, but I cannot let them attempt to put lethal on the battlefield. This could be a fluster storm. Uh, this could be a silence. They're playing silences these days. Doesn't look like a silence. Could be a brainstorm. Fluster storm it is. Okay. So I had to go off now because this Urza Saga is going to tutor up a Shuko and then they have more than enough mana to play a Cephalid Illusionist and combo me out. Um, and I can't do anything to stop that. I didn't have a silence to protect, which is the one thing that I was really missing. Um, there's the Shuko. I mean, they might not have it. I doubt it. I, I'm sure that they have it. Yep, okay. So we are going to take a look at whatever they end up showing me. Um, so I'm gonna yield to these abilities because I do want to see how they sided. So they have Teferi Time Raveler. Um, we can see how many dazes they have, right? And if they have things like Force of Negation. They have Hydra Blast and Blue Elemental Blast. Wow. Okay. Good to know. I don't think that I would have necessarily thought that they would bring those cards in. I know they have them. I didn't, I didn't think that they were going to bring them in. But. All right. There's Stoneforge Mystic Package. Two Fluster Storm at least. Uh, there's the Dread Return and the Thassa's Oracle. They need one other creature, which I don't know. Maybe they have the other Narc Amoebas in their hand. Um, who knows? Like, maybe maybe I just need to always let my opponent play it out. They have not hit another Narc Amoeba, for what it's worth. Six more cards, three more cards. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> they don't have the number of creatures. Oh my gosh. They really just don't have it. I made them play it out because I wanted to see the sideboarding 
and they don't have a third creature to put Dread Return on the stack. <laughs> All right, play your outs, guys. Wait, do they have a Nomad's End Core or a Stoneforge Mystic? Ah, they, they, yeah, they, okay, never mind. You know, I got preemptively excited about that one. That one's my fault. They had the they had the land, they had the land to play it. Okay, um, let's see. Cephalid breakfast. Um, I don't want the prismatic endings. I want these Mishra's baubles back. I don't want the crash. I just want the thought seizes. This is our standard combo sideboard of bringing in the thought seizes and taking out the galvanic relays. Um, this kind of swap is kind of just a go-to. Um, I have Slaughter Pact and I have Crash. Um, I don't think that I'm going to need those cards in particular. So we'll go to game three. Uh, oh man, that was almost there. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. Speaking of cards that are almost there, I'm going to mulligan this one. I'll keep this one. Silence is uh, another thing about silence over Veil of Summer, which is something we've talked about in the past, like talking about going back into green, depending on what percentage of initiative there is. Um, the other thing is silence and orange chant can be aggressive in addition to being defensive. So I can silence after they have milled their entire deck and then I can um, put silence on the stack and they can't cast Dread Return. Obviously, we would have to dance around it a little bit, but it's oversimplifying still. It is an option. For example, I actually played a game against Reanimator uh, last week. Um, in paper, my opponent on uh, on the draw. So I played a land and passed on the draw. They said here and threw their hand out and said, "Okay, Reanimator Grizzlebrand," and I said, "Wait, I have interaction." I mean, what do you mean you have interaction? You're Storm. You don't have interaction. And I said, could you please play it out appropriately? And uh, they said, okay, land, fetch, dark ritual. And I said, yes, I will respond and fetch. I will get a white land and I will cast silence. And they never made it out. They never found a second land. They never found any ability to um, put anything in the graveyard um, again. It was great. Uh, also, my opponent chose not to shuffle on their ponder. And we draw a lotus petal. Not bad. Ah, she kit fat. Hey, welcome to the club. Uh, thank you very much for uh, becoming a Storm fan. We really appreciate you. Where are you from? Tell us about your day. Did you have a good day? Uh, Simon, I played a league where I was able to silence reanimator twice to silence walk them and get two free turns. Oh yeah, silence walking is a very big thing with this deck. Absolutely. Um, it's less likely to happen in a blue matchup, right? I'm not going to be silence walking my cephalid breakfast opponent, but it is... Uh, It is really nice to do against, you know, Reanimator, the initiative matchups, things like that. Very powerful. Perfect brainstorm, which by the way, we don't actually have. 
We drew the Lotus Petal as a white uh, source for the silence eventually, but um, we needed uh, we needed another fetch land. We'll hopefully find something next turn. Okay. Let's see. Do I want to do this off of a volcanic or an underground sea? Probably the underground sea. Hmm. Okay. Thoughtsy's looking really good here. Uh, Mox Opal not looking super great. And then I can put the Brainstorm on top of my library. Um, I don't plan on fetching them, if that's the case. Uh, um, I do want the land, and if I want the land, let's see, Mox Opal is going back, and then the other things are that are being considered, I actually think I need to keep the Brainstorm. If I'm considering anything else, uh, I'm considering things like Lotus Petal, the Dark Ritual. Hmm. Let's go with the Lotus Petal. Play out a land. Thought sees my opponent. Uh, well, Nick, I don't want to put Echo on top because if I do end up needing to silence my opponent, um, I'll need this to get a scrub land or a plateau. Or they have double days. No, they don't. Okay. Um, I'm going to plateau. I'll pay for the days. Nomad and force of will. So I will take the force of will because the nomads and the Shuko do the exact same thing and see what happens. Uh, oh yeah, that's a it's Nick. That's a good point. Um, silencing an oops opponent in response to their their activation or their balustrade spy trigger, very very good. Um, it really has kind of turned. That was a good draw from our opponent. I don't like that. Uh, that really has turned our oops uh, matchup from nigh unwinnable to not bad. It's not good. But it's not bad. It's less than 50%, I think, but still. Oh, yeah. So, Joseph, I made the dis the distinct um, decision to find a plateau um, so that I could eventually, potentially, eventually, potentially, yeah, that sounds fun, uh, cast this silence as opposed to finding another mana and dark ritualing into this echo. I'm not sure if that's the right choice or not, uh, but that's where I went. Okay, so we can brainstorm here. Uh, that ponder, by the way, chose to not shuffle. And that is that echo we were talking about. What about putting this burning wish back in the chrome mox? Playing a land, playing a silence. And it resolved. Okay. And we'll leave this Bloodstained Mire uncracked so that it can find the color that we care about, which we don't know yet, right? We don't know what color we need to care about yet. And we can decide after this resolves. In this case, it's uh, red. But I'm going to brainstorm first. We're so close. And that's it. Okay. 
cool. I can put back ad nauseum. Is that right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold up. Um, maybe I do need to ad nauseum. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wish claw down to five. Activate down to four. Yeah, that's not going to do it. So I do need to ad nauseum. So in that case, I want to put back low mana cost things instead of high mana cost things. So I'll do the Scalding Tarn and the Mishra's Bottle. Okay, glad I counted that for a second. Could have been bad. There's my Revealed Zone for later. So Runeburn, yeah, I will explain it. We typically win by casting the spell that's currently resolving, Ad Nauseum. We are a storm spell, a uh, storm combo deck, which means that we win with casting storm spells like Tendrils of Agony or Empty the Warrens or most recently Ave Progenitor Ooze and Galvanic Relay. Um, and we cast a bunch of rituals and artifact mana producing. Uh, we fill our hand with cantrips and eventually kill our opponent by casting more than enough spells in a turn to put an, a Tendrils of Agony onto the stack, um, all copies targeting our opponent. Luckily, it looks like uh, so, Isaac, we do not have a main deck tendrils. There's no main deck tendrils. Um, don't tell Alex that this would have won the game uh, if there was one. Uh, but it ended up working out anyway. We only have a sideboard win condition. There is actually no way to win the game uh, in the main deck at all. So we have to resolve a burning wish to wish for the sideboard tendrils of agony so that we can kill our opponent. And in this case, we did so with more than enough to actually win, but we only need 10. And hey, look at that. Uh, it's not a completely losing uh, league. We actually salvaged the 1-4, didn't get anything but a little bit of pride back, and actually beat one of our harder matchups in Cephalid Breakfast, which totally fine by that. Um, our opponents were two blue-red Delver decks, uh, a Bant Natural Order deck, uh, and eight cast deck wait hold up is that right no just one blue red delver opponent so we had bant natural order blue red delver eight cast uh get dunked was playing no there was another there was another blue red delver and then renegan was playing cephalid breakfast okay not bad not the greatest showing. Obviously, we have been talking a little bit about how counterbalance, counterbalance um, against Phyrexian Wombat really uh, was a poor, we were poorly paired up against that. Um, the other things that we came up against were mental misstep, uh, not mental misstep, oh my gosh, thank goodness we didn't have to play around that, minor misstep, which looked pretty good on our opponent's side, right? They probably were playing anywhere from two to three of them in their main decks. Um, looked pretty good against us. I still haven't figured out how exactly to play around it or play into it, but I know where it is. So that's the first step. The next step is to actually do decently. Uh, Micah, yeah, 1-4 eh, is not great, right? 
It's not not up to my normal standards. I usually play a little bit better, but we really did have a rough night tonight. Um, we came back and we won the last round, so that's what matters. And I was having fun with you all on stream. Um, let me send you out with a, a little bit of an ad and then I'll close the stream out. But just so you guys know, I stream every Thursday at seven central and if you guys like the stream, be sure to like and comment on the actual YouTube stream and let me know what you think about it, what things that I can improve. And I'm always looking to meet some of you guys virtually and some of you I know in person, which is bizarre. Uh, it's always nice to get in chatting with you. Um, but uh, Runeburn. Um, Burn in Legacy, brand new. Did try Grizzle Brand Reanimator and won my first FNM. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. So, Legacy is a really fun format. I recommend getting into it and seeing what you like. Um, just because you're new to it doesn't mean that you can't step into big shoes and try to play things like Mono White Initiative or Blue Red Delver or things like that. A lot of FNMs are proxy friendly, so you can always just print out some cards and try them out. Learn the format with some of the really, really cool decks that the format has to offer. Uh, I recommend Storm, but um, it is, it's a, it's a puzzle. So if you want to get better, then you can always read things like theepicstorm.com. We have a lot of articles about introducing new players to Storm. We also have puzzles for the article series that I write, Infernal Tutoring, and it presents three puzzles every month that are Storm puzzles, figure out what kind of neat plays need to be made to actually win or survive, things like that. Uh, homework, think about minor misstep, absolutely. So with that, I wish you all a good night, good day or good morning, wherever you are in your, your life and your day. Uh, let me play you a little bit of a, a still watching social media post and then I'm going to close the stream out. I'll see you around. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us.